I recently published a video about this little device, this MIDI USB host, and that brought a little bit of confusion into my chat or in my comment section. So with this video I want to clear up some misconceptions that I saw in the comment section and hopefully it's educational for you and helps you make a good purchase. So what I wanted to clear up was the difference between a USB MIDI interface and a MIDI USB host. This device here is not a MIDI interface. It might look like it because it has two MIDI ports and two USB ports here, but it's definitely not a USB MIDI interface. This is something different, but we will get to that. So some people in the comments were linking cheaper solutions to what I was suggesting. Several people were linking this Roland USB MIDI interface, for example, and this is not a USB host. This is an interface for connecting your MIDI peripherals to a PC. And to just give you an example of the use case, say you got something like the Mother 32 from Moog, and it only has a DIN MIDI port, and you want to hook that up to your computer, but your sound card doesn't have a MIDI DIN MIDI in and out. So basically, you need some way of communicating with the computer, then you can buy something like the Roland, it just plugs in and install on a Mac or a PC and lets you transmit MIDI to and from the computer. So basically it solves the problem when you have a synth that doesn't allow USB MIDI, that doesn't have a USB port, or your sound card is lacking the MIDI I.O. But of course these cheap Roland solutions, or you know, there are plenty of brands um, providing these solutions, is that it's essentially not very useful for most people since most sound cards do have a MIDI I.O. and I would definitely recommend getting a sound card with a MIDI I.O. because it's so limiting not to have it if you're planning on expanding with hardware synthesizers. And let me give you an example of when this MIDI interface from Roland won't work or even a sound card with a MIDI I.O. won't work. And it's the use case that I was talking about in my previous video, which seemed to confuse some people. It's when you have a device, say a Minilab Mark II or a Launch Control XL. These devices are powered via the USB, so they have a USB port, and they also send MIDI through the USB port. Now, if you want to connect this to a Mother 32, you basically have to connect it via the USB to a computer, and from the computer, to the Mother 32 via, for example, a sound card or one of those Roland interfaces. So what if you want to do it without a computer? But wait, wait, why would you want to do it without a computer? Well, because it's kind of a hassle to use a computer in between a Mother 32 and, say, the Minilab Mark II, because then you need a DAW, uh, some kind of audio program, basically, that tells the Minilab Mark II to send MIDI on the correct channel to the Mother 32 and you need this program up and running. And if, say, you want to perform live and you don't want to buy a special MIDI keyboard that has a DIN port, well, then you can go about it in different ways. And one way to do it is to get a MIDI USB host. And there are plenty of different MIDI USB hosts out there. I'll leave some links down in the description to some of them. You guys suggested some really good ones in my last video and there's you know there's in different price segments from the ones that I suggested uh, about like around 40 50 euros and up to you know several thousand euros so there's plenty of it and an important difference here between something like the Roland and this one here or even something like the Roland and say a MIDI merger or MIDI splitter device Kenton has a few and a MIDI host is that a MIDI host has a MIDI I.O. It has some way to power a USB device. You can't take the Roland one and connect a USB powered device to the Roland interface and get power. There's, there's no power coming through and it's the wrong connection even. So basically these USB hosts here are meant to have power. This one here doesn't come with a power supply. You have to connect it to a computer or to a USB wall wart, I think it's called, or USB power brick or something, I'm not quite sure. I just, I got the IKEA one, so I just plug it in here with, um, I guess it's a mini USB. And then you plug in the USB cable here to whatever peripheral, you know, controller, keyboard that you want to power. And that basically sends MIDI out, or can it can also send the other way around, in. 
back to the USB device. So that's pretty much what it does. And it's a big difference from something like a USB MIDI interface. And you can pretty much divide the MIDI USB hosts into three categories. Uh, the first category are the kind of DIY stuff. You can use a Raspberry Pi, I think it's called. And the Axolotl, it's not that much DIY, but I still think you require some tweaking to get it to work perfectly. And there's this RK, I can't remember, RK004. I'll leave a link down in the description. These are a little bit more DIY. Somebody like me who is a bit lazy and a bit untechnical, I don't want to deal with it. I wanted something cheap, but in a box. And then you have the Hobbytronic stuff, and I've also seen a couple of different ones, I'll try and link them down below, that are not very much DIY, just plug and, plug and play basically. And then you have the more full-featured MIDI units or MIDI interfaces, something like the iConnect 4 or the iConnect Mio or Mio. So you can basically choose between a more professional, high-end product with a little bit more of a hefty price tag, and you can pick the mid-tier that I did, or you can go for the DIY stuff that definitely gives you most versatility for your money. And it's also good to know that, of course, the more high-end stuff, they are usually a MIDI interface and a MIDI USB host. So basically, they combine that Roland product with the MIDI USB host. So guys, I hope this clarified things a little bit and maybe shed light on the difference between this kind of USB MIDI interface and the MIDI USB hosts. And if you're still confused, just leave a comment and I'll get to it. So guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a pleasant day. Thank you. And if you're new here and curious about the coffee cup, it's kind of my catchphrase. And I've actually recently stopped using drip coffee, bought an AeroPress. I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna check that out. And I'm using an espresso bean. So you guys who have been nagging at me for drinking bad coffee, well, it's, it's not bad, you know, Swedes know their strong drip coffee. But yeah, I kind of joined the espresso camp.